dogma is the, is the dangerous bit, and it doesn't just really exist in religion. It exists uh, in more and more places now, that cultism, that that which shouldn't be questioned. Anything that, you know, that's, that's what you want to question. If someone says you shouldn't question this, oh, you've, got, you've got to question it. You've got. <laughs> I agree with you 100%. Any group, any people, any ideology, any philosophy that says you can't question it or criticize it means it needs to be doubly questioned, doubly criticized. There are people that say you can't talk about us. So let's talk about them. Why? Anybody that demands that you jettison your thoughts, your ideas, your autonomy, your agency, because nothing that they believe can be criticized or examined or in any way threatened means they are the biggest threat. They are the slave masters that want to control you. When someone says you cannot question us, and we have plenty of groups in this nation and around the world right now that believe you simply can't question them, they immediately need to be questioned, examined, and more than likely removed from the process of interacting with the human species because they are not here to enlighten and to grow with us or even to work cordially with us, but in fact, want to rule us. That tyrant needs to be destroyed. Question it. It, it's, it should be irrelevant, but it isn't because it does infringe on people's liberties. Certainly religion, not spirituality. You know, someone believing in God, that's fine. Doesn't harm this. Absolutely, doesn't bother me at all. Religion isn't harmless. It's when it's when your God starts telling you that you should kill homosexuals, and you exactly. know, that's when it that's when it's not harmless anymore. Most religious people aren't crazy. It's something else. Again, it's something you know. Um, uh, and uh, uh, we we worry about the people who believe the bad bits in their holy book as well as the good bits. Most nice people who believe in God, they can tell the difference. They do, they know the nice, they cherry pick and they know the nice bits from the bad bits. They don't do the bad bits. And my point is, if you know the bad bits from the good bits, you don't need the holy book. You know, you're already a moral person. Wrong, horrible. And to hear people clap like that was insightful saddens me because Ricky Gervais is a brilliant guy, clearly. But there is no more perfect example of a misunderstanding of yourself as an atheist than the realization that there is no morality inherent in atheism. Did not say, and I always have to question, say this to the atheists because they can't hear me properly contextually, did not say that atheists can't be moral. They can be. I didn't say that atheists are inherently immoral. Didn't say that. There can be some wonderfully moral atheists, but the idea of an absolute transcendent moral truth that murder is wrong, not you shouldn't do it, it's wrong, lying is wrong, stealing is wrong, uh, 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 framing somebody for something they didn't do is wrong. These are uh, transcendent ideas that do not come from atheism. Atheism has no moral undergirding. It can't. Nietzsche said it first, and he's a lot smarter than every one of these atheists. If God is dead, all things are permissible, Dostoevsky. The, uh, if God is God is dead, uh, then there is no moral absolutes. We are simply organisms, no different than all the other cells running around, and all no different than the animals, no different than the stars. We're just material whipping around with photons and electrons shooting into our brain, giving us the illusion we're thinking. We're not. And what they're saying is just go live this life of existence until you die. You'll be weeded out like the, you know, 24-hour flies, and then a new batch will come in and it really won't matter in the end because life has no meaning. Nihilism is the, uh, is the only true idea you can land on as a thinking atheist if you believe there is no transcendent lawgiver. That is simply philosophically and logically unimpeachable. No atheist can handle it. Why? Because they can't live that way. And so they're forced to live with a theistic idea that there is a moral truth and pretend that all they did was make this up on their own. Remember, if there's no moral law giver, then whatever you think is true and how you treat people is just a subjective opinion. But it doesn't make it right. It's just something we've agreed to. And anytime I decide not to agree to it, but I got a bigger gun and a bigger army, I win. That's the problem with 
atheism. You have no morals to give humanity. Before I started these, uh, these, these episodes, I said, I'm obligated as a Christian to pray for Ricky Gervais. And I care about him because I really think he's a great person. You have no obligation to do it to me. Atheists are always trying to destroy people of faith. I never see them trying to lift them up and love them. Why should they? They have no moral undergirding in their belief system. That's simply why atheism creates Pol Pots and Khrushchevs and Mao Zedongs and the millions and millions and millions and millions of people that were tortured, raped, killed, murdered, and destroyed by communism which is undergirded and given authority by atheism in the 20th century more than every other religion and every other secular uh, war that ever existed prior to this, and this is all documented, combined has not done more damage and death and inhumane acts than atheist-driven communism. Nothing. So I would be very careful as an atheist to ever speak about morals because your religion has none. I think it's very important you challenge your own beliefs. I mean, I mean, that's what, that's what science does, really. It doesn't constantly try and prove itself right. It follows the evidence, whatever that is. In fact, it tries to prove itself wrong. It doesn't sulk. When science thinks something and then it discovers it was wrong, it doesn't sulk because it found that out too. And this is it's a question I often get, that people say, well, you're an atheist, you know, you're closed-minded. No, I'm not. You know, that, that's a strange thing to say. I think the opposite is true. I'm going to always follow the evidence. Whatever that is. No, you're not. No, you're not going to follow the evidence. We've already proven that the world, the universe, has came into existence without any cause, came from nothing that can only be described as miraculous. And the only thing that fits a bill that could allow something like that to take place is God. That's just one concept. The idea that there is morals that exist outside of nature that nobody came up with, that we literally uh, have uh, given to us by uh, a God, something higher than us so that we couldn't just change the rules. This is another proof of God. It doesn't prove him like a scientific laboratory where he put stuff in a petri dish and looked through it in a microscope. No, because God's not mature. You don't get to use scientific <laughs> methods to uh, observe and draw conclusions about an immaterial transcendent being who's all about mind and thoughts. These are all immaterial images that you use every day and yet they're not material. You say you only believe in the material world, but guess what? Your thoughts are immaterial. The very thing you use to make your evaluations there is no God is literally immaterial. You trust it, you use it, and it motivates you. It's a proof of God, by the way. You see, there is no way that thoughts can come from rocks. But you believe that. You believe humans came from rocks. That biology came from dead matter. You believe that. Science not only doesn't prove it, it has disproven it. You don't look at the evidence because when you do, Look at it squarely. It reveals you've chosen the wrong God. Sorry, Ricky. And they say things like, if someone proved to you God existed, would you believe? Well, of course I would, by definition. In fact, it would be the greatest scientific discovery of all time. I agree, and it is. The problem is, God was first, then he created the ability for humans to use science. But, but in this case, philosophy and logic and reason to observe the natural world as all the great scientists from his area, Isaac Newton's, who said, because I believe in God, he made an orderly world that functions consistently so that I can draw conclusions to show the handiwork of God. That is why science is important. Not because it was done without God, but it was done to help prove God. Scientists would celebrate. They'd run round. At the moment, we have no evidence for the existence of any God or anything supernatural. Where did you come up with that conclusion? We have tons and tons and tons of evidence. Go watch the <laughs> the uh, debates with William Lane Craig and Christopher Hitchens and, and, and Dawkins won't debate him, but he destroys them. Look at John Lennox. Look at uh, uh, Stephen Meyer. Look at these amazing f uh, philosophers uh, uh, and believers in God who have proven with evidence that God is more likely than not. You see the evidence, but you choose not to believe it, not because it's not true. You are materials. You've already predisposed yourself to say there can't be God. So when I see the evidence, I'm going to interpret it as not being true evidence. You blinded yourself. It's a self-lobotomy, Ricky. Sorry to hear that. Never have. 
possibly never will. But who knows? Um, we're, we're across that bridge when we come to it. And when someone puts forward a, a jar of God, we test it for its godliness. And if we find there's anything godly in it, we'll we'll write it down. If we ever find God, we'll put him in a jar of God and ch- ch- check his godliness. Again, to show how little he thinks of what God would be. You see, he's going to see God someday. When he dies, his spirit, which is what motivates us, which is outside of our biology, it's, in, it's within us, our spirit, he will see God. He will not stand before God and question God and shake his hand to God like so many atheists act like they will. He will be on his face, as will I, in deep awe in the realization that he has made the greatest mistake of his life. And the evidence was given to him, and he rejected it. The great horror of hell is you chose it. If you throw a, a, a load of coins on the floor, no one arrangement is more amazing than another. And it's sort of like they work backwards. Because this is what happened, this is what we think is perfection. We, so we try and... We, we, we can't get around the fact that it's crazy we've got two eyes. I, I, that's exactly why I put them. You know, these, these are brilliant. The, this is exactly, if I was making a person, I'd make it just like me. And it's hard not to think there was a will to it, but there wasn't. You know, it's hard not to think there was a will to it. This is God telling him, doesn't this make sense that there was some purpose, an architect behind that? And then he moves to his default. But because I know there is no God, he doesn't know. He's made a faith decision. He ignores the evidence. That's why atheists are so confounded. They keep saying there's no evidence. Why do you believe in this? There is. You've chosen to misinterpret the evidence. You're a fool. But you know what the Bible says? The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Atheists, for the most part, are really smart, but they're not wise. And wisdom allows us to see the evidence and draw the only conclusion we can, as difficult as it is, to understand this being that is beyond the material world, it's the only thing that makes the most sense. That being, that powerful, probably would be difficult to understand. That's why he would be God. And I'd just be a man with two eyes and two arms. The Mark Twain quote about, it's so great that I have ears here to hold up these things. We have, we have glasses and these ears are just perfect for that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Another Mark Twain. Mark well, Twain was what's said. particularly good yeah. about that, it's a double whammy. Yeah. Because he's being sarcastic about evolution. And, right, right, right. But in a strange way, people should take the analogy of the glasses. Because we know those glasses were made for ears. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's strange. We know that we did that, and no one would ever go, what a coincidence. Yeah. Someone, I just found these weird glasses on the floor. And they fit my ears. And he just destroyed his own belief system. He's actually making the claim that when we find something that clearly is designed, we know there's a designer. And yet when he looks at his own body, his own brain, his own mind, his own hands, his own eyes, the absolute beyond comprehension complexity of the human body that is greater than anything in the universe, clearly nothing could have done this by accident and it certainly couldn't have come from inert rocks. He believes it does. Ricky, you have chosen the most foolish and unbelievably ignorant ideology and cowardly ideology in human history, atheism. The belief there's nothing I have to answer to, nothing that I hold uh, a, a, a bow a knee to. Uh, I'm God. Whatever I want, whatever I believe. And by the way, already predicted in the Bible, the original sin that God says he hates more than anything is pride, putting yourself in the place of God. Ricky, I'm telling you, and I know you'll never see this. This is more of a allegory. Uh, hey, buddy, you've brought amazing things to the to to the human spirit. Many laughs, wonderful things. I love your work. You need to know your Creator. I want you to begin in heaven. Maybe we'd have some laughs. I might even meet you there. I'm not going to meet you here. That's what people can't get around because they want to do that with everything. They want to do that with, you know. Yeah. But wasn't it great when he made bees like pollen? <laughs> you know, that was a master stroke. I could just add flowers and bees. He went, no, I'm going to make them need each other. Brilliant. <laughs> How to kill all mosquitoes in the area in 90 seconds.
This simple but brilliant trick you can do tonight to eliminate all... <laughs> you are a pathological atheist, mm. and therefore the thought of death is very final for you. For me, it's the start of something new and glorious. For you, that's it. it for me, it's the end of something glorious. So I have to pack it all in. <laughs> this is important. This is something that I have noticed. I have never met an atheist in my life that understands. I, I haven't watched the rest of this, but I'm going to presume that what he's about to say is this. Since we know that life has no meaning, what you do is you make the most out of what you do have. You look at this life, you know it's going to vanish. So you make the most out of life. You love every minute. You smell every flower. You look at every mountain range and sunset and just find the meaning in that because it's going to go away. And this is the glory. This is the beauty. This is what all we get. So let's just be good about that and be okay with that. And then I go into eternal unconsciousness and I never know I missed anything because I'm no longer here anymore. But while I was here, I had a great time. Well, here's the thing. We already know that the universe had a beginning and we know the universe will eventually die that means there's a beginning and an ending like a novel a big giant novel and every single person inside of the novel all of us tries to write a chapter about life here's an important thing about me here's something i liked and they write this little chapter in the novel and then ricky comes along and he says well i, I let's just love life and let's just love science and let's just make people laugh because that's good enough but see I, I i made a meaning by writing this chapter and then i wrote mine everybody wrote theirs and then at the end of it all the universe disappears completely so every single thing we did to supposedly hold on to some meaning was an illusion literally a uh, a, a psychiatric uh, delusion we had to give to ourselves to survive the ability to understand that life has no meaning and we're just going to go into eternal darkness and never know we were here and never know that anybody's here. That means Hitler or Mother Teresa or Ricky and Jeffrey Dahmer all could just simply die. Doesn't matter how evil or good they were. Doesn't matter. Nobody's judged. Nobody gets in trouble for it. We just go into eternal unconsciousness. Now, that is absolute despair. That is pure nihilism. So atheists always have to give in this illusion that they find value in whatever they can put together now because it's all they get. But again, they're inside the novel. Once that novel is burned to a crisp, every story inside of that simply vanishes. It had no purpose. It was never here. If no one's here to remember, we were never here. No atheist I've ever met in my life can grasp that. But when they do, they find God because they realize, wait a minute, I live my life every day as though it does have meaning. Why would I look at that pile of rocks and dirt and suddenly view them as a mountain and see it as beautiful? Why would I see that nuclear fusion that creates the sun that's simply a chemical reaction and instead see it as beautiful? All those beautiful colors in the sunset are simply light diffused through all these uh, uh, specks of dust and, and, and smog <laughs> running through the atmosphere. And yet I pretend like it has some value and some beauty. That song that has no survival meaning, that poetry, that's that, 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 that sitcom that has no purpose in survival but gave joy and happiness is simply a testament to the fact that God is real and gives us these moments to say, it's really me, it's really me, here's how I do it, this is exactly how I do it. When you see the beauty in the moments, Ricky, it's me saying, come home. But you're gonna try to pretend like somehow this meaning that you've created out of meaninglessness has value. You are literally fooling yourself. What could be worse? But, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not depressed about it. I, I don't want to die any more than anyone else. And I think there's a strange myth that atheists have nothing to live for. It's the opposite. We have nothing to die for. Yeah, we, we have all to live for. We because... have everything to live for. Yes. I think it's precious. I think it's beautiful. I think the world is amazing. I love people, animals, art, every hobby. I can't. I can't believe my luck that I'm alive for these 70 or 80 years. What, or in, what, what? Might be less. <laughs> Boy, you know, I, I'm not long for this world. Notice, I'm watching this for the first time. I did not have a precursor to what it was going to be said. And before I played that clip, I told you what he was going to say. I told you exactly what he was going to say, and he just did it. He has self-deluded himself into pretending that his life of meaninglessness is meaningful. There is no more greater delusion. 
But when you saw the beauty and the, f- and, 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 and the specialness of being alive, that is God saying, it's me. I've created you for a purpose, and you need to know me. And he has chosen instead to worship what God created, not the creator. I'll worship the st- stones and the sunset and my music and the cats and the dogs. I'll worship all that as though it has meaning, when in fact those were all given to you so you could find the creator. You chose to ignore him, Ricky. You're not a smart man. You're not a wise man. But you're still here. Believe it or not, that's God saying, still waiting, come home. My nan used to say that. She lived till 83. I think it was 40 years ago, and I'm not long for this world. <laughs> <laughs> what are the, you said the things you like. What are the, the, the things that really annoy you? Um, only two things really, really make my blood boil, I suppose. I suppose in general, as I get older, injustice. Injustice quietly makes my blood boil. Either, either personal, social, political, um, you know, uh, personal. Uh, he just said injustice makes his blood boil. What is injustice? What is it? Well, it's when unfairness happens to people. You're an, you're, you're an atheist and an evolutionist, buddy. Your belief system is that nature is red in tooth and claw. There is no justice. Simply when you see a broken down uh, beast, go eat it alive. Rip its throat out. Or if it's a baby and it can't get away. Or it's slow. Destroy it. Eat it. Survive. Just survive long enough to die. You're looking for justice, but justice isn't... Earlier you said you want to find God in a, in a test tube. Hey, Ricky, show me justice in a test tube. Show me it in a petri dish. Show me it in a telescope or a microscope. It's not there because justice is an ethereal concept that you believe belongs here. Atheism didn't give it to you. Atheism just has material and that's all. All you are is a material machine going through life as though you have some meaning or that you think. Sam Harris believes you're determined. You're already predisposed as to how you're going to live your life. Every time you think, you're not thinking. It's an illusion. That's what atheism gives. And yet you continue to live your life stealing from Christianity, that justice is real and matterful, stealing from the Judeo-Christian idea that God will in fact punish the evil in the end. You have to steal from the antithetical belief system for you to function in your false belief system. And it is a religion, atheism. It's the religion of worship of yourself and value in nothingness. It is pure absurdity. Um, I suppose the two, two main categories are our religious intolerance, this, this arrogance that, that you think, you know, arguing over whose God is right. It's- Meanwhile, you're arguing over there is no God that's right. You're arguing over you're not allowed to even make a a, a presupposition that perhaps there is an actual God who actually is in fact true. You're not allowed to make that argument, ever. But yet you make the argument that as an atheist, you see things clearly. And if everybody would just become an atheist, the world would be a better place. That's your religion. That's your hypocrisy. And you're living it out in real time right here. Those of us who actually think through it, see it. Again, Ricky, see yourself. Physician, heal yourself. There's a creator. Come home. Sort of gets me down a little bit, you know, and I've got, I've got no problem with spirituality. I really haven't. Uh, you know, that's another myth. And I always try and make the difference clear between spirituality and religion. Mm-hmm. One is a very personal feeling, a journey, a hope, or, or whatever, a, a need you know, a a joy. And yet it's an illusion based on what you see. So you let them have the spirituality. As long as it's not God, as long as it's just feelings, then that's okay. Because that's all an atheist has is feelings. So he's okay with that as long as it doesn't force him to have to come face to face with the lawgiver and with true justice, which says, if you haven't accepted my son, you will continue on your journey into hell. Not get thrown to hell, not get pushed into hell. You're already heading that way. I've fixed it. I've given you a key to escape. and You've chosen to reject it. So you have no excuse. Again, it's a cop-out when atheists say, oh, as long as you're spiritual, I'm good with that. Try to make them look good amongst people because most people throughout human history have believed in God or a higher power. The outlier, the, the, the person that really has never made sense to most humans, are the atheists. So they always steal 
from those of us who actually believe in something that has eternal truth so they can survive. Any belief system that cannot even survive without stealing from an antithetical belief system needs to be abandoned. And the other is an organized body that uses that for power and, and corruption. As opposed to the organized body of scientists who have decided that we'll tell you what masks you have to wear, what vaccines you have to take. We will decide what is good and what is bad. We'll decide who got allowed to, uh, to, to eat this type of food or not that type of food. We'll decide who allowed to have combustion engines or who are not. We're going to decide that we're destroying the earth and so we're simply going to have other people die and be destroyed by taking away their ability to function properly so that we somehow save the earth. The religion of materialism of atheism, of scientism has been more death causing than any other belief system in history. Ricky, you picked the wrong side. In, in, in many cases, in many cases. Um, and, I, I, you know, I, I don't have either, but um, I, 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 I suppose I, I think that um, um, when it affects me, that's when I have a say in it. And yeah. Just like when atheism affects me. When atheism tells me uh, that uh, I'm a fool, I believe in a flying spaghetti monster. Nobody on my uh, internet shows uh, and commentary have been more evil and destructive than the atheists. They find pleasure in maligning and, uh, and saying the most awful, horrific, hurtful things towards me and to people of faith. They get pleasure in hurting people's most sacred ideas. No, don't talk to me about atheism. I've seen what it looks like when it's uncontrolled and it is ruthless. And when it becomes an entity that you say you hate, like communism, it is the most evil belief system in human history. And Ricky, that's the club you joined. Feel sorry for you, son. And religion affects me. Religion's very real. So we don't need God to be good. Um, we don't need God to be good, and even if we did, we haven't got him. <laughs> we don't need God to be good. Yeah, you do. Absolutely you do. Because without God, there is no good. It's just your preference. It's just your subjective choice. There is no absolute good or bad without a lawgiver a rule maker, the one who created the game and said, here's how it works. The essence of God is good and love and truth and justice. Anything outside of that is the dark side, that which is the antithesis of God. Once again, atheists always want to steal from what we've given, the virtues that we've given humanity, and co-opt it and then pretend that it can be done simply by human effort. And that pride started all the hell this earth has ever seen. <laughs> Quite right. So there's what no is what's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I didn't choose to live, but I love it. Love isn't even real if atheism is true. It's just a chemical reaction fooling you into pretending that what you believe has value. That's the end of this three part series. God's comic versus Ricky Gervais. And as I conclude this, I simply want to say this. I will never meet Ricky Gervais. I will never know him. He will never be my friend. He's in Britain, and again, he runs in circles I will never know. But I want to conclude by re-reminding you what I said in the beginning. I think he's a brilliant comedian. I love his work. I really do. And it has enriched me. He's given me joy inspired me to do my work. The only difference is I know where whatever talent or gift I have comes from. I know where it came from, from the Creator who had joy first. He said he made us in his image. If we laugh, if we have joy, he had it first, he gave it to us. So Ricky, I pray for you every night. I pray that you will know God and I do pray that someday you will come to say, you know what, it is right. There is something bigger and better than me and I'm grateful to have actually found it. And then you will have the eternal life in the perfect place that you pretended to be able to create here on earth. That is a day I'm longing for. Not sure if it'll happen, but I'm praying for you. This is God's comic, Brad Stein, 
all I'm doing is putting the woke back to sleep. Thanks.